Good evening, Simon here, Explosive Action, and we are back with another metal update for July. This one is the vinyl LP update. And uh, in the background, we're listening to a CD, which came in today, Summoning Oathbound. This one I had been missing. I don't know how or why I was missing this one, but this was the one album of theirs I was missing. And I picked it up off a guy on Facebook for $15, I think, Australian. Not super easy, but also not super hard to get, so there you go. We're listening to that in the background, everybody knows Summoning. Big Tolkien themed atmospheric black metal from Selenius of Abigail. And the first one we got here, 7 inch. So happy to score this one. The uh, split between Anhedonist and Spectral Voice, uh, both Death Doom bands. The final track from Anhedonist to a uh, broke up a long time ago, but um, had one track left over. And um, Dark Descent put this one out about maybe six months ago, maybe five months ago. Um, and it sold out like in a day. Um, and I thought I was not going to be able to get a copy because some distros had it, but the shipping was terrible. But anyway, uh, Nuclear War Now ended up getting some in, and Seance Records in Australia stocks Nuclear War Now. So I got it for a very good price. Very happy to actually get the Anhedonist Spectral Voice split. Cracking tracks from both bands. Um, yeah, heavy as hell, uh, do, uh, Death Doom. Uh, the Spectral Boys track is uh, probably one of their best, actually. Uh, so yeah, um, see if you can get a copy if you can, because it's uh, it is it is sold out, but highly recommended. All right, on to the LPs. Cenotaph with Monte Verita. I'm sure I butchered that. Um, I'm gonna take the sleeves off for each of these. To fix the glare, and we'll re-sleeve it later. So there you go. These are a French Canadian band. Um, I love French Canadian black metal. It's all got a sound, a unique French Canadian sound. Um, and Cenotaph don't stray too much from that black vinyl. Um, yeah, if you like any of their previous works, this is their latest album, you're going to get more of the same. It's really good, real lush sound to it. Um, if you like bands like uh, Forderess, uh, then you're going to like Cenotaph. Uh, so, yeah, definitely check out Monte Verita probably going to feature in some end of year lists I think. Going back in time we have Varathron with their first album His Majesty at the Swamp. Um, this is the Nuclear War Now reissue. I love that cover. It's not the original cover but it's the um, one of the earliest covers that they did do. Look at that classic stuff. <laughs> Amazing. Necro Slaughter on guitars. Um, real foundational early Greek black metal, nothing exciting in there. Uh, from 93, 92 and 93, the tracks were recorded. And yep, it's, it's fantastic stuff, everybody needs this album. Um, it's not fast in any way, early Greek black metal never really was. Um, it sort of meanders along and uh, it sounds kind of like this forest. It real all fits together really well. Um, yeah, just really good. Eight tracks of Varathron. Um, so now I've got the first album from them and their last one, uh, their newest album, which was uh, really, really good. Um, I need to get some more from this band, so awesome. Now, on to something more modern. Uh, this is Thy Dying Light. Um, I think it's a self titled album uh, from memory, I think so. And um, it is a UK band. There you go. UK band, uh, two piece, I think. So there you go. Sounds like um, sort of uh, Carpathian Forest with Marduk and uh, uh, Craft, I think is probably a good example. So all those bands together, um, and you're going to get the Dying Light. It's uh, quite a polished sound, uh, really tight, really good riffs. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, Fast, it's consistently fast. Every track is just a blitzkrieg of black metal. Uh, unfortunately, as has been happening to me so much lately, uh, this was another one. This is four now, where the record has arrived. What? I don't know how well that's going to come across, but let's see. Yep, another, another bowl. 
thankfully this one still tracks and plays fine. I have located the shop in the Sydney City that has a, they call it a $2,000 Japanese machine that is designed to fix uh, record warps. So I'm going to take in all my warps, which now total four, and uh, get them all sorted. So it's a shame, but I'm going to be putting a hold on getting things from the UK and Europe for the moment until shipping gets faster because my theory is they're just sitting in uh, the airport heating up and I know it's not just me uh, on forums, on Facebook groups every other Australian importing from the UK or Europe uh, is getting uh, fruit bowls for records so but this one this one somehow made its way through this is a uh, Vampiric Rights demo number three also from the UK and it also took some time Grace was with me that day it, um, did not arrive warped, it was flat as attack, very, very happy. Um, limited to 100 copies from uh, Death Cult Productions. Everything that Wampiric Rights put out is excellent. It's raw black metal, but um, it's got quite a riffy sound to it. Um, quite, um, quite an organic sound. I really dig, I don't know what I'm going to ask, just black, 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 black. Um, so yeah, it'd be hard to find uh, the physical releases of this band because they come and go you know, within minutes but um, you can obviously get them on digital on uh, Bandcamp and um, look out for represses on other formats, tapes and CDs perhaps they will come so it went very great, Demo 3 very good and very flat also in the raw black metal this I got from Australia uh, from a local seller this is Lampier with The Alchemy of Cursed Blood um, this has got to be the most raw black metal band out of raw black metal bands that I have ever heard. There is very little need to have this LP if you've got the tape. I'll put it that way. Quite a muddy sound. Takes you a bit to get into it, um, just black. It's almost like a test pressing. It's got the triangle for two and one. Um, you've really got to be a fan of raw black metal, not just black metal, but um, the raw black metal stuff that's been popular the last few years to enjoy something like Lamp here. Uh, I do enjoy it. You've got to be in the mood. Um, quite hypnotic because it is just so raw. Uh, but it's good. So if you've not heard them and you're into raw black metal, then check out Lamp here. Um, this band is called Nadra. I'm sure I've got that wrong. Icelandic band. Um, really good. Really, really good. Iceland's been kicking it uh, really hard lately. Um, bands like Svarta Dordi, uh, I probably got that wrong too, but that's how I would say them. Svarta Dordi. Um, yeah, Nandra have a similar sound. Uh, a bit like the French Canadian black metal bands, the Icelandic bands will have a bit of a theme, um, like Finnish black metal bands. Um, something in the waters in each of these countries gives them a certain flavour. Um, and uh, Nadra have the flavour of Iceland. Really good. Um, this came out on Frozen Empire a couple of years ago, I think. Nice presentations, really thick LP sleeve. And uh, got the inner sleeve, quite nice, really sturdy. And a white, sort of marbly LP splattery thing. Really good. Um, I think this one's pretty easy to obtain. I got it from a local seller on Facebook that was selling it on, but I'm sure there's going to be copies elsewhere. Um, so there you go, that's Nadra. I won't even try to say the name of the album um, because it is in Icelandic. So anyway, N-A-D-R-A, -A, but actually the D is like got a crazy cravat. I don't know, it's, yeah, it, that's it. There's your D. It's not a D, it's a D, whatever. Good band. Okay. Death Metal, we've got Phobophilic. Uh, this is their four track demo, which they reissued on LP. Quite happy with the tape. I didn't, I wasn't planning on picking this up, um, but I was looking on Amazon Australia one day, um, only a couple of weeks ago, and um, this EP, uh, Undimensioned Identities, uh, dropped from, it's from Rotted Life and Blood Harvest, did the LP release of it. Only four tracks. Um, and it was 21 Australian dollars shipped from the US with prime shipping. Um, that is basically free, so I added it to cart. 
and here we go. And it does sound better than the tape, obviously. Um, really good sound. They are a US band, but they have a bit of a Finnish death metal flavor to them. Um, but it's Swedish as well, so yeah, really good, phobophilic, check it out. Um, Undimensioned Identities, looking forward to some kind of full length from them. Be really good. Got this one from a Melbourne distro. Uh, this is Chaotian um, with Festering Excarnation. Uh, I absolutely love the cover art on this one. Not sure who did it. There you go, look at that. Really, really awesome. Green sewer. Really, really cool. Um, so this is a, a pressing again of demos. It's their two demos from uh, 2018 and 2019. Um, really raw sound. Um, they actually, it actually sounds quite festering. That's a really good way of describing it. Um, yeah, it kind of sounds, um, I guess, like autopsy and um, autopsy mixed with some of the more um, modern primitive death metal bands, I guess. Um, yeah, K Ocean, really good. Quite a raw sound, like I was saying. Um, they have just got the demo tapes and thrown them on wax. Uh, there's a green copy, but mine's the black one. Um, it's out through uh, Misako Dolunjo, MSUO, um, and uh, yeah, recommended, good stuff. And the next one of the new releases I got is uh, Like Rats with Death Monolith. I love the cover of this one as well. I love when a cover sings to you and says like, you must buy me now. Bright, bright pink thing, so cool. Um, so Like Rats, um, nothing on the back though. Like Rats were a hardcore band that just, a bit like the, the other band of Feather and Bone, one they just said, screw it, we're going to play death metal now. And uh, that's what they do, they play death metal. Hardcore tinge in it, whereas uh, of Feather and Bone really dropped the hardcore and basically turned into incantation. Um, you can still tell that um, these guys have a hardcore heritage. Um, got a clean sound, it's... Um, Never too fast, it's got a pretty mid pace speed to it. Um, really solid death metal. And um, to match the cover, it's a uh, sort of pinky, purpley, fairy floss kind of color, which is interesting. So, this one um, I thought was lost in the post. I got this from the US, um, not from Amazon, um, from Wow HD, and I ordered it on April 14. It arrived. Um, uh, on Friday last week and I'm very happy that it finally did because uh, I was expecting it to be lost and it didn't show up as a bowl either so that was a good day I got this and the Wampiric on the same day recommended like rats um, I don't think people talk about them enough so do give it a check Funeral Leech um, Death Doom Band on Carbonize this is Death Meditation um, I got this from a Melbourne distro Again, this was one that I wanted to get from the start um, and it was proving hard to find it affordable overseas and then the first pressing sold out and it was out of print. Uh, but a Melbourne distro, they um, picked it up, so I was really happy to pick it up. Um, it's um, yeah, quite slow to mid-paced death dome, um, big, big sound, really big sound. Another one that's going to feature on end of year list, possibly mine, I'm going to give it a few more listens. Um, but yeah, if you like um, like Crypt, uh, Crypt with a K, then uh, yeah, band uh, Funeral Leech, they'll do it for you. Um, yeah, good stuff. Definitely check it out. More on the primitive death metal, we have Pestilent Death uh, with Chapters of Depravity. This one's also on Rotted Life and Blood Harvest. And another one I got from Amazon because. Rotted Life seems to have Amazon distribution, which is really good, which means it filters through to Australian Amazon, which means I get Prime, which means I get free shipping, so that's awesome. Um, really, really cool. I love the cover on this one too. Um, like zombies and skeletons and stuff, um, which also gives you an idea what it sounds like. It sounds like um, maggot stomp bands, basically. Um, I think there's a tape from, of maggot stomp from these guys, if I'm not wrong. But uh, yeah. Dirty, dirty, dirty death metal. Really primitive sound. Um, really good fun. Definitely worth checking out. It's like I said, it's on Amazon, so you can get it really cheap. Prime shipping pays for itself after like one record and a Blu-ray, and you know, you, it's 
as far as I'm concerned in Australia, you'd be really stupid to not get Amazon Prime. I'm going to move on to some of the older stuff now. I've got this one on um, uh, on Facebook. This is a old Australian compilation, Barbaric Onslaught, uh, Australian Metal Attack. I got this for a whole $10. Very happy with this. Um, it's got um, a mix of bands from about 2002, I think this came out, 02. Uh, from Decius Productions, who don't exist anymore, but they were the first label that did Portal, um, Portal Sepia album. And um, yeah, you get Portal on here, you get uh, Destructor, Martyr, Atomizer, Urgrind, Carbon, uh, Grenade, Oni, Stargazer, Anna Razel, and Misery's Omen. All very good stuff, and definitely of that time period. Uh, the Portal track's great, particularly Stargazer's always awesome. So. Um, this is on. This is cheap on Discogs, really cheap, and I think there's international copies, so I'd say pick it up because it's a great compilation. Um, yep. Yeah. Next one. Found this one in a shop. Found the next few in a shop, which is awesome. Um, this is Mystifier. I think it's their second album, third album, third album. Uh, first album's Wicker, second album's Goisha, and this third album is when they start getting pretty weird. Is the world is. To, is so the world is so good that who made it doesn't live here. Anyway, these these guys are crazy weird, really weird. Uh, Greek, aren't they? I think they're Greek. Uh, black metal band, quite avant-garde. The vocals are all over the shop. It's crazy. Um, it's really quite crazy. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Um, very avant-garde black metal. Um, definitely check it out. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a lot. It's a bit of a departure from the first album, Wicker. Um, they just keep getting weirder as the band just progressed throughout the years. So, yeah. The world is so good that he that who made it doesn't live here. It's the, the lack of grammar in this that is throwing me. But anyway, that's Mr. Fire. Here's a great band. Oh, man. This is uh, Melikesh uh, with their first album. Uh, or is it the second album? Jin? I think it's their first album, it was a demo before it, Jim. So Melikesh um, uh, were at the start an Israeli band uh, founded by Prescriptor from Absu. And there's a lot of Absu in this sound, mixed then with um, sort of uh, Arabic and um, Middle East sort of sounds. Um, the whole thing has a real feel to it that feels Middle East. Um, very unique sound, Melikesh. Uh, they came out around sort of the same time as Nile. People started comparing them to Nile, to the Egyptian theme, and then Middle Eastern theme. But these guys are much more, um, much more interesting, I think. Uh, so that's that's Jin. Um, awesome, awesome album. Uh, this is the uh, Osmos first release, and I also got uh, Sphinx, which is the better of the two, I think. Just by a hair. They're both excellent albums, but Sphinx. Awesome. Um, never had any CDs of the band. I, it's one of those bands that I, I listened to when they first came out and just never better, never bought anything. I think they're still going. There's at least three more albums after this one. Um, yeah, awesome to get this one. This was limited to 500 copies on Osmos, so it cost me a little bit more, but very happy to get it. Just black wax, nothing too exciting. All right, now we're getting into some really cool old school stuff. Morbid Angel, Abominations of Desolation. The first, but not really first album from the band. Um, everybody must know this by now. So Alters of Madness is the real first album, but before that, um, there was the album they recorded with Mike Browning, who moved on to Nocturnus um, on vocals before they had Dave Vincent. And the whole thing was shelved and they re-recorded it and it became Alters of Madness, basically. It is an interesting take on the tracks. Uh, a lot of people prefer this to the final album stuff. Um, some of the tracks are actually quite different lyrically, and some of the leads are quite different. The names of the songs are different. There's a song here called Azixoth, um, which is, oh, I've forgotten what that one actually is. But some of them are the usual ones, like Lord of All Fevers and Plagues. Um, Welcome to Hell was renamed from something else. Um, yeah, Chapel of Ghouls, of course, on here. Awesome. This is the original uh, Earache Press. It's still got this £14.98 sticker on it, which is quite funny. Um, so there you go, original Earache Press. 
did not cost too much, um, as it should be. The Discogs prices for old LPs can be quite annoying, but uh, I paid a reasonable price for that one, I was happy. Stoked to get this. I put the, the word out on Facebook, one of the uh, metal groups I'm in. Somebody please hook me up with this. I really wanted it, and I did want to go to international at the moment. Obvious reasons. Attacker. How good's that cover? Battle at Helm's Deep. Just, just take that in for a second. You taking it in? Good. I just love how terrible that cover is. It is like an amazing, terrible cartoon. Fantastic. It's what drew, drew me in the first time. And then of course you listen to it, and it's and it's excellent. So these guys, um, 1985, um, sort of heavy metal, new wave heavy metal sound, going into a bit of speed metal. Um, lots of fun listening to Attacker. And it's a great, great pressing as well. Look at the photos. Aren't they great? Um, what I've been finding too, which is uh, interesting going back in time as I have been, um, so many albums came out on Roadrunner in the 80s that were heavy metal, traditional heavy metal, speed metal, and a bit of thrash. Um, when it's really, uh, there we go, Roadrunner. Roadrunner for me was always Suffocation, and Deicide, and um, Sepultura. So, they, um, it's just eye-opening eye for me to see how much more um, Roadrunner, Road Racer, and RC, all the same thing, uh, did in the past, in the 80s. So, very cool. Attacker, Batter at Helm, Battle at Helm's Deep. And the next one we've got here is Hellstar, Burning Star. This is their debut. Um, American, I think, uh, heavy metal band from probably 85 or so, maybe a little earlier, doesn't say. Uh, yeah, this is their debut. Solid stuff, a bit of a bit of an early Judas Priest sound going on to it. Um, yeah, I quite liked it. The, um, the band, I think, might still be going, and there's definitely some more follow-up albums. It does have a signature of 84 there, so that gives you something. Um, again, I like this kind of cheesy, hand-painted art that the uh, that mid-80s heavy metal albums have. It's just, it's pretty glorious. Um, so yeah, Hellstar, Burning Star. It's good. Enjoyed that one. De Kaiser. You think it's going to be German, but it's French. French metal band. Um, really cool. Cool artwork on that one. Got a bit of a 70s look on the back. Definitely does have a 70s vibe to it. Um, all the backs in French. I got no idea what's going on. All the song titles are in French. Um, the songs are sung in French. Uh, but it's all. It's yeah. It's just. It's just plain old heavy metal. It sounds really good again. Um, nothing much more to say about it. It's from 1984. And uh, yeah, just another good plain old heavy metal album. De Kaiser. Dug that one. Next one we got here is Chastain, um, Mystery of Illusion. This is, I think, the second album from this band, the second one that I've got. Um, maybe it's the first album and I've got their second, I can't remember anyway. But this is from 85 and it's another Roadrunner album. Really, really cool. I love this hand painted artwork again. Got some, uh, some naughtiness going on there. Um, yeah, they kind of got like a Sirith Ungol sound going on, I think, this band. Um, and uh, for, yeah, for the year, uh, female vocals too, it's quite rough, quite coarse vocals. Um, yeah, it's just the Roadrunner. So yeah, another one I really dug. Um, quite, um, quite slow and doomy. Uh, I'm not going to get that anymore. Quite slow and doomy in parts like, um, yeah, like Sirith Ungol. Um, and yeah, just overall quite a recommended metal album. Good. Quite a lot of things, didn't I? And uh, the next one. Explorer with two X's. Uh, Symphonies of Steel uh, debut from this band. And <laughs> this is on Metal Blade. Check out that photo. <laughs> Oi, that's a good one. Oh man. That, that bloke on the end there. Lady Killer. Amazing. Um, this is from uh, 86. Um, and yes, just again, it is just another typical heavy metal album of the period. Um, not too fast, not too slow. The vocalist uh, tries to reach for the high notes. Doesn't always get there. 
but you know, it's fun. Um, got some bits where it gets all piano-y, but uh, not for too long. It's all pretty heavy. Metal Blade Records. So yeah, Ex Explorer, two X's. Um, the first release on this uh, came out on a different label. It has a completely different cover, but um, I think this one came out maybe the same year. Um, on a bigger label, Metal Blade, and I think this cover art's actually better, so pretty cool. Explorer Symphonies of Steel, not Symphonies of Sickness. Next one, Cloven Hoof with Dominator, New Wave, a British heavy metal band. These guys are really good, really enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, the cover art obviously pretty damn fantastic. It's like, well, one of the songs is called Warrior of the Wasteland, so I guess that's who did, who she is. Got like full armor and looks like she's got some kind of like wooden club crossed with a chicken leg. I don't know. Amazing and that hair. That's not going to do you really well in the wasteland, but whatever. Band photo. Good fun with Clover Hoof Dominator. This is their second album, I think. 1988. Um, I'll read you the blurb on the back, it's just brilliant. From the heart of a dying subatomic world comes mankind's enslaver. Genetic engineers in the utopian search for the perfect organic life form created the hell of their own making, ruled by the Dominator. 1988. There you go. Not quite thrashy, but it's pretty heavy metal and good fun. But speaking of thrashy, stoked to be able to knock this one off. Blood Feast their debut album, Kill for Pleasure, outstanding artwork on this one, it's just completely bonkers awesome, um, there we go, back, if you've not heard Blood Feast, they're an um, American thrash band, but geez, they want it to be German, it's, it's just raw, fast, um, sounds like early creator, it's, yeah, awesome stuff, um, really, really stoked to get Kill for Pleasure. And I found it in Australia. Pretty much everything we've seen, except for the early ones, I've found locally. All of this metal stuff from the last few records I showed there, it's just all local buys, so really, really lucky. Um, yeah, Blood Feast, Kill for Pleasure, amazing thrash, you need to get it. And uh, following that one up, Face Fate, the uh, follow up EP from Blood Feast. Um, there's only, what is it, six tracks? No, four tracks. Four track EP. Looking very, uh, very late 80s, early 90s there. Um, yeah, this just continues exactly where uh, the debut uh, left off. This Skull guy is almost like their, their Eddie in a bit. Just keeps showing up everywhere. Um, yeah, awesome. Uh, this one's on New Renaissance, I think. Yeah. Totally recommended. And uh, definitely the the the, uh, the best two albums or album and EP from Blood Feast, their first album and first EP, Face of Fate, highly highly recommended. I cannot believe this one happened. This was this was shockingly amazing. Sacrifice, forward determination. Wow, just that cover art. Just soak it in. That is amazing. Let's soak it in with the sleeve removed, but that doesn't take it all off. This thing, when I got it, was brand new and shrink wrapped. Completely and utterly new, not a saw cut. Just, it was just brand new. I had to, I had to decant it myself. Release the um, 33 year old trapped air. Um, and I didn't pay very much for this. It was like, uh, yeah, not, not much at all. That, um, very surprising, the CD for this album goes for three or four times more than the LP. It's one of those one of those cases where the record is worth nowhere near as much. Um, and I found it from an Australian seller. It went up on Discogs, matched my, match, my uh, wish list, and phew, gone in seconds. So, so stoked. Um, the original US press on uh, Diabolic. Just awesome. These guys ripping, ripping thrash. I think this is their third album. Maybe the second, but anyway. Totally ripping thrash album. Uh, just... You need to get it. If you like 80s thrash, you need to get Sacrifice. You need to get Blood Feast, but you need to get Sacrifice. Completely awesome stuff. Um, from 1987. 
So there you go. Um, and cannot believe it was brand new. And the last one. After that giant pile, and I'm getting tired. The last one here, everybody knows. Metallica, ride the lightning. I got this one shop in the city, and it is the um, Australian. Can't remember. No, I don't think it's the Australian. It's uh, an American pressing, but it's from um, about '85, around about then. Not Ele uh, Electra. Awesome, awesome album. Obviously, arguably their best. Lyric sheet, vintage photos, and. Uh, Trapped LP. There you go, WEA. So, play is awesome. Stoked to get it. If I was going to find an old Metallica album in a shop, I'm glad I was going to be this one. And um, it was a pretty reasonable price as well. Tracks, obviously, everybody knows this album backwards. Um, not much more to say. It's just, it's awesome. It's on LP. It sounds great. And I'm very happy to have it. And that, my friends, is that. Whew, that's one hell of a record update. I think I got too many things, I don't know. Um, a lot of bargains in there and uh, a lot of things that were shipped from overseas that finally showed up after some time. So uh, yeah, that's it. That's the record update. Thanks for watching, see you next time.